Yes, welcome along to episode three of Up in the Ante in association with Bet365 with David Jennings and Gavin Lynch counting down to the 2021 Cheltenham Festival. Gavin, I was walking in today, walking into the show, walking in the streets of Dublin into the studio and I got this roar from across the road. Hey, hey, are you, are you the racing guy? <laughs> and I says, yeah, yeah, I am, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, your man off the telly. I says, yeah, what, what'd you make your man yesterday? Shishkin. I said, oh jeez, he was very good. Oh, he's very He'll win, he says he'll win. He says, you know what? You're not as fat as you look on the telly. <laughs> Is that a backhanded compliment? I don't know. Anyway, Gavin, how was your week? Asher Grant, uh, put him wise, good start of the week, but then I lost Friday, Saturday, Sunday. That's not like you. So I lost the week. So that's, uh, we'll try and make up for this week. Yeah, absolutely. And I have to say you were right all along. After all these years. Mr. Coffee? Heritable? No, fashion. Ch- fashion? Yeah. Go on. David Beckham was spotting and check her shorts. So you're back in fashion again. Love me check shirts, I do. Now, last week, Gavin, you said we had a big announcement. You're going to give details of this charity cycle. Yes. Time for the details. Okay, so on May the 22nd, okay, put that in your diary. Uh, we're having a cycle. It's called Coast to Curra. We're starting on the coast. We're doing seven race courses and maybe a couple of stud farms on the way. So we're starting a Laytown race course, Laytown Beach. First picture at quarter to eight in the morning will be us standing in the water in our bare feet. Then we'll go to Navan, sorry, Bellastown race course, then Navan. We'll be in Fairy House at half eleven. We'll be in Nace at quarter to two. We'll be in Punchestown at two o'clock. And then we're going to the Curra. I'm doing this, am I? You are. Now, you have a choice. The whole thing is 155k, but if you want to do 80 metres in Fairy House, and if you want to do, say, 25, like even my 12-year-old daughter is going to do that one. So there's no All excuse. Right, put it in. I'm going to do it. <laughs> there's no excuse. It's a brilliant charity. It's inspired by Pat Smullen, who, as we know, uh, passed away. Uh, my mother, mother yeah. and my own mother uh, with pancreatic cancer so it's, the money is going to Cancer Trials uh, Ireland fantastic cause everybody should do it May the 22nd we'll try and get a few celebrities to come along as well if I can do it anybody can do it great idea great cause brilliant brilliant from Gavin Lynch let's get on with the show now up in the anti viewers you lucky ducks we've got another very special offer for you just because you have watched up in the anti if you sign up to Bet365 and enter the code UTA, as in up in the ante, UTA365, as in Bet365. Terms and conditions apply, but UTA365, sign up to Bet365. As ever here on Up in the Ante, we're going to kick off with our questions from the crowd. Yes, where you, the viewer, gets to interact with myself and Gavin Lynch. Send us in your questions. YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, tweet me any way you want. Get your questions in. If you've got a question to be asked, we will endeavour to answer it. And the first question this week comes in from Josh Maguire. And Josh wants to know, very good question, what is our favourite racing commentary? He like Roaring Bull. Roaring Bull! Yeah, Last well, Christmas from Jerry Hannon at yeah. Sound, And he also liked Richard Hoyles' co- uh, commentary on the Nuntorp when Frankie thought he'd won the num- Nuntorp, but he wasn't so sure because Marsha did. And Josh backed the winner. So Gavin, what's your favourite racing commentary? Uh, probably because it was an amazing... A race, amazing finish. But for me, uh, I was only a young lad, was Don Ron win the Gold Cup. Are you going to do an impression? Uh, go for it. The mare's beginning to get up, and as they come to the line, she's made it. Don Ron has won it. Okay, right? That's the iconic commentary. Okay? I just, yeah. Yeah, obviously. But like, to win the champion hurdle and the Gold Cup. No, no, I know, that's the horse, okay. not the commentary. But like, the mare is beginning to get up. I'm no racing commentator. I could come up with that. I, I just thought. But it was a great finish. There was four of them jumped yeah, the second last I know, together. I know. So, it was a fantastic race. But yeah. it, it, will, it will go down as the greatest commentary of all time. But for a line, the mayor is beginning to get up. I'm not, I, I thought we over-egged it a little bit. And I know it's people just, are going to hate that. But it's a special thing for mayor to win a Gold Cup. I know, but that's the race, not I the know. commentary. It's all okay. part of it. Denman okay. was great in the Gold Cup. Okay, too. well, that's mine. Richard okay, Hiles, sorry. Denman. Relentless, remorseless. He's pounded a Cotto star into submission. And right as they're passing the line, because everybody was saying... Who's going to win Denman or Cotter Star? Denman or Cotter Star? He says, the answer is Denman. Denman's won the Gold Cup. And that to me, every time I hear it, I just go, oh. Yeah, I love that one. So I think Richard Hiles beats Sir Peter O'Sullivan. Okay. There you go. That was your question, Josh. Our next question this week comes in from Paul Donahue. And Paul wants to know, who in the racing world, who's the nicest person that we've ever met? And also, who's the one that you've met that you don't want to see again, Gavin? Uh, can I, as usual, when you ask me for one answer, I usually give you two. Is that okay? You do. It's like your tips, yeah. Yeah. Um, first one is Edward Gillespie. He used to be the race course manager mm. in Cheltenham. <clears throat> so myself, my brother, and my cousin, we cycled to Cheltenham for charity. I think it's maybe 10 or 12 years ago. And uh, I had rang him beforehand to say, could we do a lap of the track as a race on the Monday when we got there? So I went into his office. There was like 10 people waiting to see him. And I just said, Edward with the lads from Ireland, we cycled. 
oh, certainly, come on with me, come on, come on. Everybody wait, wait, wait. And uh, I said, can we do a lap of the track, maybe the ambulance path? He goes, yeah, certainly. On one condition, he said, you must do, uh, you must walk around the parade ring beforehand like the horses do. And he spent, I'd say, an hour with us, and he was the nicest man. He was a fantastic fella. And the other one was Aidan O'Brien. I got to go to Ballydale in 2001. Uh, Des Gahal, the race course commentator, uh, brought myself and uh, Glenn Ryan, the Kildare footballer. And uh, we were with him all day, and we were leaving at three o'clock, and he said, come in for a cup of tea. And we said, no, we've taken up all your day. Thanks very much. Come in for a cup of tea. So we stayed for, it was two hours, four course meal. There's a picture of Dunica, who was 18 months at the time, standing beside me. And um, Aidan was just an amazing man, lovely fella. Great guy. And you? Uh, yeah, Aidan is obviously fantastic. Uh, like I, we're, we're very lucky in the racing world. There's very few people that you're looking at your phone going, oh, I don't want to ring this person. Like the absolute gentleman of gentlemen is probably Ken Condon, flat trainer. Just... Just helpful, nice, normal. Seems an easy going. Yeah, just, a, just an easy going lad. The second part of the question, I, somebody you don't want to be I don't again? know uh, enough people Have you ever fallen out with anybody? Racing, no. No. Maybe on a soccer pitch, but... Okay, okay. We're going to swerve that question. Okay. Yeah, I think so. There you go. That's your question, Paul. And our final question this week comes in from Adam Begley, and he wants to know, what is the name of the horse that we always back, but barely ever wins? And he says, he puts in a little proviso here, apart from Sam Crow from me. Okay, mine would be Antukas. Okay. Antukas, just every time I think he's going to win, tipped him in the paper on Saturday, on Sunday in Navin. You know, he only had Black Bow to beat. I thought he'd be a better horse than Black Bow over fences. He isn't. And yet there's still a part of me going, I wonder will he be a grand annual horse? So I just, yeah, I just, Antukas is the one for me. What's okay. yours? I wouldn't necessarily blindly just follow a horse because that's not that's a good way. That's why you're so good, yeah. I know, but it's not a good way maybe to make money. But I had a look, and Bill Away I've backed four times, and... Uh, He's been placed three out of four, so he's not a, a lucky horse at the moment, but that could change. And is he in any of your multiples for the Chatham Festival? Not so yet, far? no. Not yet? No. But he will be. You Maybe. said not yet? Maybe. You said not yet? That was this week's questions from the crowd. So then, the week that was, you t we, we usually think, you know, the weekend is where it's at. Everything happens over the weekend. But Gavin, Lord, holy God. Holy God. Shishkin. Amazing. We're not going to start with him, though. We'll go back to <laughs> we'll have to start No, with we don't. No, no. We'll finish with Shishkin. You're stickler for rules. Okay, yeah. you're, you're going in chronological order. Yes, well said. So back to last Monday. No, last Wednesday in Warwick, uh, the oh, no. Dancing Queen. Yeah. I don't know if you've seen her. It was two mile five, but she travelled very well. She jumped very well. She actually ran in two Cheltenham bumpers, which mm. is quite interesting. And she uh, won a grade two mare's bumper in Aintree a year and a half ago, I would say. So she was quite impressive. Lovely white face, jumped well, quite yeah. keen, but lovely filly. Yeah. Uh, stepping down trip, she'll be fine. She's 14 to 1 for the mare's novice hurdle. Uh, also at Warwick on Wednesday, a horse that I was very, very impressed with was Phoenix Way. Uh, he's a seven-year-old. He's 33 to 1 for the RSA. Cool, so, right? Yeah, as usual. He's the famous horse that won the Pretemps qualifier yes. in Huntington one day by a very, very easy head. Do you remember that? Yeah, Barry you Gershaw. put him up for the Pretemps. I did, and he was favoured to win it. He was in, going to be running at 140. So because it was two miles, I didn't back him because I didn't think that would suit. But he gave a horse a stratagem. It was a four-year-old. Gave it seven pound, one well. I think he's going to be a, a really, really good horse, particularly when he steps up and trip. A wing canton on Thursday, a handicapper, Tamarack Dumatan, a five-year-old. First time over fence for Paul Nichols. Uh, he won at 131. He absolutely bowled today. Jumped brilliantly. Just if he ended up in a grand annual, he might have a chance. Uh, market racing on Thursday, Joseph O'Brien sent a horse over Tower Bridge for one of these famous or infamous pretemps qualifiers. Uh, finished fourth of nine, the top six qualify. Jumped very well apart from the last two. So he'd have a chance uh, in the pretemps. He's 14 to one favour for that. Hey, I know you don't like the pretemps qualifiers. Pretemps has to go. Should be just go. Normal. It should be gone. Should be a normal three we're mile. We're praising horses for finishing fourth and fifth and yeah. sixth. It's ridiculous. Go yeah. on. I agree with you. Uh, Thurless on Thursday, a horse you like. Uh, Lord Royal fell at the second last. <sighs> Can't get a bit of luck with these early tips. <laughs> he jumped brilliantly. He point. did. He jumped well till then. I was 50-50 whether he would have won. I stopped, Gaff. But we'll see. I was 9 um, ten. Presenting Percy came right back to himself in the boomerang chase. He did. Did you like that? Did that was very good, Gavin. <laughs> was, the, was that what the race was called? No, the boomerang chase. Was yeah. it? Very I'm here all Gavin. week. Yeah, well done. Um, jumped very well. Showed a lovely turn of foot. He beat two horses, Ken Boy and Mona Lee, that maybe needed the run, but he couldn't have done any more. He was very, very good. And, Loves uh, his like the year he won the RSA. He ran the Portistown. He ran in the Galmoy, I think. Did he that year did. as well? Yeah. So he just needs racing, 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 racing. Yeah, last year racing. He, three runs he had last year. He had the Durkin uh, brothers. He had the, the two race in Leprosound, but. Uh, he'll run definitely a couple more times before yeah. Chatham. The more but, uh, racing, the better. For he's 16 to 1 for the Gold Cup. Ascon on Friday, Chantry House was quite good. Pictorial fell won? three out. Ah, I'd say so. 
His jumping was grand, and then he obviously was very... He was very good up the home straight, but he was. Victoria was cantering. Yeah, it was too far out to say. Sure, it was at least a half mile out, five furlongs out. Uh, Metier, a four-year-old, uh, was rated 90 on the flat when trained here by Andrew Slattery. He's now two from two over hurdles. Yeah, very impressive. And he's 33 to one for the uh, Supreme. Another handicapper to mention uh, from Friday was Buzz. Won a handicap very easily of 137. A lovely grey horse. Coral Cup. That horse is written all over him. Yeah, or maybe even the county. Uh, Friday in Goran Park, Umdor, a three-year-old for Willie Mullins. It won a bad race, but it won't hurt. well, did it? It jumped okay. Uh, big horse, one by 16 lengths. Uh, is 18 to 1 for the Triumph Hurdle. Then we move on to one of the races of the week was Fernie Hollow and Bob Ollinger. Oh, yeah. What did you, so, so what did you do in the end? Did you back either of them? I didn't. I, okay. I didn't know what to do. And Pick Fernie, between your favourite daughter, really, wasn't it? <laughs> um, Fernie Hollow was too bad of a price, and I like Bob Ollinger. So, uh, so Bob Ollinger won by a length. I thought they both jumped well. Uh, Rachel Blackmore was quite uh, clever in what she did early on. She went really slow, hoping that Fernie Hollow would be keen because he's been keen previously. Mm -hmm. So that was very clever tactics from her. Uh, the overall time of the race was quite slow. Uh, I think it was like five seconds slower than Umdor's race. But I went and hand-timed. There's a, a lovely tree in Gorham Park just beside the three furlong pole, so it's very easy to do the hand-timing. So Umdor from their home was 47 seconds. Make Good was 50 seconds. Uh, C. Ducker was 46, but Fernie Hollow was 43 seconds. From the three. From the, roughly the three furlong pole to the line. So they really quickened. Two really good horses. Uh, I was impressed with Fernie Hollow. I wouldn't give up on Bob Ballinger either as an each way pros prospect, maybe for the Ballymore. Perfect. He, he'll step up and trip. Uh, Enric Amin was very impressed on the same day. He's 25 mm. to 1 for the marsh. Made all, jumped great, had a solo. Yeah. Nice horse. Too many solos happening in beginners' chases in Ireland. There probably is, yeah. But they'll all have to meet someday. Haydock on Saturday, the ground turned heavy, and surprise, surprise, Bristol Demai won the Betfair Chase. Yes. Thoughts? That's a bit of a shock. Uh, no Gold Cup winner in those three. Um, Clandes Obo will win the King George for the third time in a row. No, he won't. Uh, lost in translation. You think I wouldn't you give up on him. Yeah? I do, yeah. Okay, I don't. Uh, we'll have a fiver on that. Yeah. Done. Um, lost in translation. I wouldn't give up on him, but it's a long way to come back from that performance to win a Gold Cup. Mm. Uh, he's 16 won the Gold Cup. Bristol Demai is 33s. And Clandes Oba, who can't win a Gold Cup, is 40s. Uh, Ascot on Saturday, Imperial Aura is now the 13-2 favourite for the Ryanair. After winning quite easily, beat Itchy Feet by five uh, lengths. Uh, jumped very well. David Bass is a gas man. He just loves these asking for big jumps, doesn't he? Yeah. Uh, but but like, very does impressive. he deserve to be favourite for the Ryanair? I don't know. Itchy Feet jumped like, like he had Itchy Feet. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? There's like only three finishers. Didn't and jump well, got within five lengths. Very good performance, but like they're raving about him over there. I'm not I'd like to see him go and beating really good horses. Yeah, he's 13 to 2 favourite, bet 365, and he's a seven year old. He shot a price the min, like. Yeah. Um song for someone who's only a five year old. Uh, beat Call Me Lord by five lengths. He he needs soft ground. Um if the, the champion hurdle came up soft again, he might have a squeak of being placed. By the way, Perel Arena. He's twenty to one for the champion hurdle with bet three six five. Lorena, it's very sad to see, really, isn't it? Because yeah. a couple of years ago, she looked like mm. an amazing mare, keeps, but keeps bleeding, disappointing, yeah. yeah. Uh, notebook on Saturday. Uh, mess cashback, for race. Mess for race. Cashback fell at the first. Uh, they probably went a bit quick. Uh, Factor do the Rio was slightly disappointing. Notebook was held up at the back for a change. Last year, it used to make the run. 20 to 1 for the champion chase. Uh, Janet Dill, I thought, was incredibly impressive mm. in the beginner's chase. Mm. Jumped. Brilliant. If you get a chance to look at that, mm. uh, the jump of the Janadil. 25s for the Arca, 20 for the Marsh, about 365. Very nice horse. Uh, because of uh, Enviolen and now Shishkin, I wonder what JP McManus is going to do with Unaccepted, Elixir Danae, Chantry House, Janadil, Andy Dufresne, a Phoenix Way. <laughs> so I'd say a lot of trainers are going to start I looking at... Imagine being JP for a day. <laughs> I'd say trainers are going to start looking at the RSA for some of them because yeah. the other two look nailed on. And uh, Navin on Sunday, Manella Indo just went round... In second gear, one easy. Not much more to say about that, Jim. No, I was very surprised, though, that some bookies cut it from eights to sevens. Like, sure, what's that about? Uh, Castro Vitera won the bumper by three and three quarter lengths. Uh, Brenda Pelt said after she jumps well. Yeah, she looks a lovely horse. Like her. Uh, Appreciate it um, was, I think, uh, one to 12 on Sunday in Cork. I it wasn't like to meet on the one to 12 coming to second last. No, uh, Paul Town was certainly very cool on it. Yeah. Uh, it was six seconds slower than the first maiden hurdle, so not a quick time, but it jumped really well yeah. and is favoured for the Ballymore. It'll definitely step up and trip. And then we're on to uh, Shishkin yesterday. Well. Gosh, it was a wow performance. Wow. Like really, really wow. I it's, said on Twitter, it was like a child waiting for the next episode of Peppa Pig to come on. Every fence. Give me a fence. Give me another fence. 
I he remember, just loves it. I remember one of our girls when they were like two or three, you'd say, Mama, <laughs> because of Peppa Pig. But uh, Shishkin was brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Short, long, stood off the ditch. Just, he looks a class. Now, I was looking through Twitter this morning and Tony Calvin, the famous Tony Calvin said, Shishkin is going to be the first real test of anti-post tipping shows. How we dissect Shishkin's performance. The first real test. So Gavin Lynch, I'm putting it to you. Shishkin, is he a ridiculous price? A ridiculous price in November for the Sporting Life article. I think it's the right price. I wouldn't lay him a two to one, would you? No. Nope. I think he's around seven to four. To me, that sounds right. He's, he should have won the Supreme far easier. He got into a fair bit of trouble. He was on the inside. Then he had to come around them. Then the horses fell. So to me, he was easily the best horse in the Supreme. Chasen's his game. He jumps brilliant. Like... The only thing I'll say, and it's the only thing, if you're thinking about taking a really short price on Shishkin, and the likelihood is he could be as short as, as Altior, he could be long odds on on the day in the, in, the, in the article, okay? The only thing I will say is, I watched the Supreme back again, and the race at Newbury, and a couple of different races. Natural speed-wise, as in that instant acceleration turn of foot, he just needs to be wound up a little bit. And my only worry, and this is only, this look, we're, we're trying picking. to find flaws in something that's probably not flaws in, but I'm just saying, in an article, where they go very quick, and I just wouldn't like to see him make, he looks a brilliant jumper, but if he did make a mistake at the fourth last or third last, mm. at that stage, when it's really quick, and he just takes a little bit of time, as you saw in the Supreme, like, he lost his position in the Supreme, yes, he was hampered two out, but he lost his position in the Supreme, after kind of nodding at the third hurdle. And then he was like, he just didn't stick with them. Yeah, he showed so a great attitude. So it's just that natural He showed a terrific attitude. Yeah. He's possibly my favorite horse in training. I love the horse. But I'm just saying, if you're looking for flaws, it's that kind of, that downhill run maybe from the fourth last into the home straight. I just worry a little bit. He, he might has, just be like Altior and hit that little bit of a flat okay, He has one over two and a half, which is good. Because mm. I think he's he won do, a point to point. Yeah, you do need to stay to win an arca. But if there's two to one about, I love a monkey on him at two to one if there's any around. Mm -hmm. but, um, yeah, I love him. Look, I love him. I know, he's a fantastic horse. Uh, can we give a pretend award? <laughs> you love your pretend awards, yeah. <laughs> uh, right of the week, Bridget Andrews, uh, Robin Gold, yeah. Ascot. Just, <laughs> like, you don't remember Tommy Carmody, but he used to win the odd time like that. And obviously there's, you know, Paul Carberry and Jamie Spencer. But It was like she went like that to Jamie Spencer. Yeah, yeah. it was just class to watch. Um, and just to mention, uh, there's, I think, 20 races priced up. And after this coming weekend... 16 of the favourites will have run, so things have really kicked off. Jesus. You'll That's never see Amory again. Nope. That was the week that was. So as you know by now, each week here on Up in the Ante, we preview one of the big races at the Cheltenham Festival. And this week, it is the turn of the Queen Mother Champion Chase. And with Bet365 at the moment, Chacon Persuas is their 4-1 to one favourite. Previous champion Altior is 7-1. to one. It is 8-1 to one. last year's Arkle winner, Put the Kettle On, 12-1. to one. Defi Desai, 14 to 1 Politologue, the defending champion, along with Rouge Viff, and it is 20 to 1 Bar. Gavin, 4 to 1 favourite, Shaq and Persua, uh, lay or a bet? Probably a bet. The only thing that's a worry is that in three years, nine months, he's only ran four times. He had a long layoff, then he won in Nace, he won in Punchestown, he could beat last Christmas, he beat Min, your horse, in Leopardstown there at the end of January, early February, and then, of course, on the day he missed the champion chase. Mm. So it's not, not an injury, though. I know, but just what he, a stone bruise or whatever yeah, it was. Fought, yeah. It's just not an ideal um, profile of a horse who you're going to back in, say, November for a race in March, is but it? But the only thing I'll say, I went through, because we have to put up selections every week, we're looking at these markets all the time, all mm -hmm. the races, 20 whatever races, and he's the one favourite. I said to myself, oh, four to one, that's, that's okay. Yeah, no, it's you're good You're looking price. through price and you're going, that's too short, that's too short, that's too short, that's too... Hold on a second, four to one. Like, he's going to run a Christmas in the same race, looks like. Willie said that the John Durkin would be the ideal place to start him, but I think he wants to start Min there. He's won it for the last two years. Yes. He's going to run the race at Christmas. He's going to be odds on no matter what. Yes, he was beating him last year. But if he goes and wins that, like, is he not the type of horse that could blow this division wide open? Yeah, I'd sooner back him a two to one on the day, to be honest. Okay, then, okay. Yeah. I just don't think he'd be odds on on the day because of injuries and a few bits. But um, A like, fully fit and the best 100% Shaq and Bersois or 100% Altior, who do you back? I would probably just about pick Shaq and Persuas simply because of the age. Altior is now 10, turning 11. Uh, for an 11-year-old to win a champion chase would be an amazing performance. But um, he still was, like, was he 5-2 to two after winning the game spirit mm -hmm. last year? So I definitely wouldn't discount Altior. He's one of the best horses we've ever seen. Um, so he'd still have a chance. 
But then when you look through the rest of them, it's just not a great champion chase. Uh, put the kettle on as eight to one. Like, would you back put the kettle on at eight to one? I just think her jumping is a little bit slow. I think I'd sooner see her in the in the mayor's chase. We have a glass of water, please. Definitely decide he's not going to win it. I can't see Polito like winning it again. Min is going for the Ryanair. Duvan, no, no book maybe. Rouge Viff would have a small chance if the ground was good. The only real I gave you a couple of fifty to one shots for the champion hurdle. <laughs> uh, last week, Marie's Rock and uh, Willie's. Have you pulled one out of the champion chase? I just, if a horse who's 33 to 1 came back from. Give me a clue. Irish or English? Oblivion. Uh, Irish. Hasn't Which? ran in 19 months or whatever. Who trains it? Joseph. Don't know. Go. Larishburg. Larishburg. God, I'm just I saying. forgot about Larishburg. He, he won the grade one at Christmas. Yeah. He won the grade one at the end of January. He was favoured for the article. Then he got injured. I haven't seen him. I don't what, know. Have you heard him? No, nothing. You hear everything. No, I don't. I don't. I don't. But um, if he came back, he'd have a little squeak. But okay. the top two in the market should be there. Okay. So we're both in agreement. Four to one, Shaq and Persuade. If we, if we are forced to have a bet now, it would be Shaq and Persuade. Yeah. And a little saver in Larishburg, who's burning up Joseph's Yeah, you'd have to see him entered or something. Okay. okay. There you go. Shaq and Persuade. It seemingly wins the 2021 champion chase. So what you want to know now is what's happening this week. I think it'd be easier, Gavin, to say what's not happening this week. Yeah, lots on. Because everything is happening this week. It is one of the really brilliant weekends. We seem to be saying this every week. But yeah. I find when you get into November, the, the November meeting at Cheltenham, from there to Christmas, it's just bang, 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 Tinkle Creeks, Labrooks Trophy, Bedfair Chases. It's just brilliant. Uh, we'll kick off with the Labrooks Trophy on Saturday. Mm -hmm. And I have a strong fancy here. Go ahead. In all my 10 to follow lists, he was one of my horses to follow for the season, Sam Brown, trained by Anthony Honeyball. An unbelievable performance, giving way to Imperial Aura at Carlisle, over an adequate two and a half miles. I just thought to myself, watching that race, if top of the game doesn't make it, which he is, hasn't made it, if he doesn't make it, Sam Brown. I even spoke to Mr. Pricewise, Tom Siegel, about this. I said, Tom, my head is wrecked. Top of the game, Sam Brown. I think top of the game could outclass this lot. I said... If both of them make it, I don't know what to do. And now top of the game is gone. This Sam Brown, Gavin. Five star Soft bet. ground. Soft ground. New, uh, Newbury, he's a brilliant jumper. Uh, still relatively unexposed. I think he could ha has the He's a grade one horse on bottomless ground. So if it does get really bottomless, the more I'll fancy Sam Brown. I think he's got a cracking chance. So Sam Brown, for me, in the Labrooks Trophy on Friday. The long distance hurdle looks a cracker. Yeah, you have Paisley Park, <clears throat> Mac Fabulous, Somerville Boy and Time Hill. So that'll be a real good race to watch. And who, to who's see, your favourite? Uh, I love no bet because I'd love to see Paisley Park coming back to what he showed, say, a year ago. But I'd have me doubts. So. Okay, Time Hill that. for me in that. Okay. Uh, the fighting fifth hurdle, the return of the champion hurdler, Epitant. She wins 8-15. to 15. It's buying money. She has to beat, say, So Royal. Silver Streak, who she's beaten twice. She should win. Could you take that 4-7? Ah, I don't really like odds on, but um, to me it's a bit of value. But this thing of mares getting seven pound is just, yeah, this it is has to stop. This, yeah. I hate it. It should be three, four, or five. It's three on the flat, I think. Seven is crazy. Like if Epitant, let's say Epitant beats Silver Streak in the champion hurdle by a head, who's the champion? I think seven pounds too much. Okay. The just, mares are too good. Okay. Just a line on a horse I think will run really well, and that is Ribble Valley okay. for Nicky Richards. Uh, you know, has to go and do it at the top level, but just. I think Newcastle has made for him and uh, was very impressive on his reappearance. So And Marie's Rock is running the Jerry Field on, on Saturday. Yeah. I like her. Yeah, I like one on that side. And Epitant won the race last year of 137. Uh, Marie's Rock runs this time of 141. You're taking Marie's Rock. I'll take Nicholson for Ollie Murphy. Okay. A horse I absolutely love. So Nicholson okay. v Marie's Rock. Done. Another match bet for us. Yep. Uh, Sunday, Ireland. Fairy House. Glorious meeting last year, obviously. Envoy Allen won. Honeysuckle won. And Sam Crow fell at the second yeah. last in the Drimmore. In fact, I do the re one, yeah. Yes. So three grade ones. Okay. Uh, first of all, the Hatton's Grace. Honeysuckle looks again to be the one. Yeah, she'll win. Uh, I'm sure she'll be odds on. In the Drinmore, in Violin, will be odds on. Uh, easy work, maybe, might run against her, I'm not sure. Uh, maybe assemble. And then in the Royal Bond, Bally Adam. Uh, she wears it well. And there's even a concertista who is still a, a novice mm. just for the moment. That'll end very shortly. So. Bally Adam, I presume, would be favoured there. Yeah, I think she wears it well as a very slick jumper. Yeah. She's and she's she's had a couple of runs and she'd be getting a bit of weight yeah, and uh, she's a very quick jumper, yeah. So okay. great weekend and great day on Sunday. Yeah, absolutely. Plenty to look forward to this weekend. So it's anti-post picks time. Yes, the latest instalment of myself and Gavin selections for the 2021 Chatham Festival. And we have two each this week, Gavin. Yes. 
we let the master kick off. I oh, know. Uh, I'll start with a double because I don't you giving out to me with tipping up two to one shots and seven to two shots. We're on the doubles already. Yeah, we're on the double. Yeah. You're lucky fifteens there. And and, and while then uh, two to one to win the uh, the marsh, I think is fine. And honeysuckle at seven to two to win the the mayor's hurdle, I think that's good. So the double is twelve and a half to one. So that'll keep you happy. It's going to be cold in December too, Gavin. <laughs> Staying uh, in the bleeding, obvious here. The two of them run this Sunday in Fairy House. I think the two of them will win. Oh. I think the double next week could be six or seven to one. Oh, so, so I see what you're doing here. You're so getting in early. You have to plan ahead when you're yeah. tipping up a horse. It's like booking a, 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 booking a table at a restaurant. Yes. Well, you know it's going to be booked out. So you're going to get in there and ring now for a table on Christmas Eve. Especially with COVID, you have to ring ahead. Yeah. Uh, Twelve and a half to one. That sounds like a bit of value. Yeah, well, I just think... I think the two of them are unbeaten. Uh, and Violin, 10 out of 10. She's 9 out of 9. Um, Henry has said she's going to go here. She's going to go to the Irish Champion Hurdle. And then we'll decide whether the English Champion Hurdle or the Mayor's Hurdle. She'll go to the Mayor's Hurdle. She won't go to the, uh, the English Champion. Um, Benny Dudu is turning 10. There's a small chance maybe she might go over fences. I personally thought, even though I backed Benny Dudu, I thought Honeysuckle was the best horse in the day at Cheltenham. I think she'll win again. I think 72 is, is good value. So the double. And if you were going to do a double involving... Um, Shishkin or even Easy's Land, any of them, they all look very solid. They're the four. Yeah. We attempted to probably look at 15. No, they're too short. <laughs> but you, so could do, you could do a, a double or a treble if you wanted to. So there you go. Gavin Lynch's latest selection is a double. It is 12 and a half to one. Envoy LN to win the Marsh Chase and Honeysuckle to win the Mayor's Hurdle. 12.5 to one with Petri 6.5. It's decent value, I have to it say. Is. If you put on 20 quid, hopefully you'll get back 270. That's all right. Yeah, it's all right. That's all right. Nothing wrong so with that. The second one I is... I hope you kept this a bit more simple, did you? I did. Go on. Uh, this one is Tower Bridge, the ran during the week in Market Raisin. <laughs> yes. It's 14 to 1 for the pretemps. Uh, I think it's got a great chance. It won two bumpers on good ground. It won a grade one when it had just turned mm. five over two miles six. Racing, that's all, yeah. It did. So that's very impressive for just turning five. It finished uh, fifth in the Albert Bartlett. Uh, the first four home were Kilbrick and Storm, OK Corral, Santini, uh, Bally Ward. Fifth was Tower Bridge. They were all seven, eight, six and six. He was only a five-year-old. He was then third to Santini and Roxanne in a grade one over three mile. Really good horse. Like a proper grade two, grade one horse. Madden him for the Triton last year. He jumped terrible. So they sent him over fences. He's had seven runs over fences. Zero wins. They've given up on that. He's just not a good enough So where jumper. did he finish at Market Raisin? Finished fourth. Finished fourth. There we go. Yeah. So like, that you have to be in the first six. That just sums up the You're delighted. Oh, you wouldn't have put up that horse if he won. You wouldn't have put him up. No, because you get a penalty. Yeah, exactly. But, Ridiculous. Uh, get rid of the pretend... Why is the Pretemps final still on the programme at Cheltenham? Why? Well, can you answer me why? I don't know. They should just have a three-mile handicap. Or else just do the conditions again that you only qualify for the race if you finish first or second. We can't be. Come here, we're back in the room here. Sorry. Go on. Um, so he did finish second to a Plutard in a handicap chase. The novice handicap chase 19 months ago at Cheltenham. So he's got great ability. Um, he's two runs at Cheltenham already. And the good thing is that uh, he's rated 145, but... JP also owns, you know what I mean, Harry, who's 12, turn and 13. He's rated 151. So if he carries top weight of 11 stone 12, that means that uh, Tower Bridge will carry 11 stone 6. Um, to me, he's got a great chance of 145. JP won four of the five handicap hurdles last year at mm -hmm. Cheltenham. I think they'll target the race. I think 14 to 1 is good value. No sire to Berlay this year. Hopefully he'll be in the stairs as well. He will be in the stairs, yeah. So 14 to 1 Tower Bridge per Thames final. You're quite excited about this one. Uh, it has a good chance, yeah. Yeah, okay, dogs. There. Those two or three, as it is this week, are Gavin yeah. Lynch's latest selections for the 2021 Cheltenham Festival. So I have two 33 to 1 shots this week. Yeah, I pick, one. I pick the one number that I say worst. 33 to 1 <laughs> shots for the Cheltenham Festival. The first of those is in the article now. Me and Gavin pick our selections on a Sunday and have them in for Monday morning, okay? So this happened before <laughs> the massacre at, at Kempton on Monday. Uh, I went for the Sporting Life sponsored article as it is now, and I went for Elixir Danae, okay? Now Shishkin, I know Shishkin is probably gonna win the race, okay? But Elixir Danae ran in the Supreme, okay? We're still traveling well, possibly would have finished third, okay? Mm -hmm. To Shishkin. Uh, ran against Envoy Allen uh, last year. Finished third or finished second at Nace. I thought it was a real good run. Real good run. Didn't stay two miles six at the Dublin Racing Festival. Spoke to Patrick Mullins over the weekend and just said, oh, you know, Elixir Danae, how is he? Jumps great. Just straight away, oh, he jumps great. So I'm hoping, seeing what Willie has brought out, the Janet Hills, even Lord Royal, who jumped great, Ener Gamain. Ener Gamain, yeah. Ener Gamain, like they're all, they're jumping yeah, really well. Really and well. If, if Patrick is saying that this one is jumping well as well, 
I was looking through the prices and he was the one that, that stood out to me in Bet365 prices as just the wrong price. He's a 14 to one shot, 16 to one. Hopefully he'll come out and win his beginner's chase and on the day he could be five to one for an article. So this show is about trying to find value. I think 33 to one Elixir Danae for the article is too big of a price. I'm not going to lie to you. I very nearly tipped up Elixir Danae. I a couple weeks ago. Did I'm you? you? You can ask a pal of mine. I nearly did. But the thing that put me off was that Willie said in one of his quotes, he started two mile, he might step up and trip. So then I thought, oh, but I think he'll probably end up in the article. Yeah. I think he's a great chance. 33 to one's brilliant value. Uh, you're getting, you know, if you could get Willie six to one Willie told me he'd bring me back at one o'clock one day. I'm still waiting at five. <laughs> but um, yeah, good pick. Okay, Elixir Danae, 33 to one for the article. And my second selection is also 33 to one. And it is Castra Vitera for the Mayor's Novices Hurdle. 33 to one bet 365. This gorgeous, imposing, she is... She is, you love Jennifer Aniston. This is the Jennifer Aniston of the thoroughbred world. She is beautiful to look at. Mm -hmm. She's a big, imposing, strong, gorgeous mare. I was very impressed with her at Nav. And yes, the second horse probably will come on for the run and had less experience. But I thought Castor Patera made the run in first run of the year, showed a good turn of foot, stretched up the home straight at Nav, and they really quickened from the two further mm -hmm. pole. Apparently she jumps great. Brendan Powell said afterwards, Joseph has said all along she jumps great. And she she looks like a Cheltenham filly. Like she looks, she's she looks like she will cope with with Cheltenham. And to me, going by her form even from last year, which yeah, has even worked the out. Nice well, run, yeah. yeah, the nice run has worked out well. Her form has worked out well. And I think if she wins a maiden hurdle, I think she looks tailor made for the mayor's novice hurdle. She's 33 to 1, you're taking a chance. She's never ran over hurdles. You don't know how she's going to act on the day, but I think 33 to 1, Castor Patera, who is a very good bumper mare, is cracking value. You love these 33 to 1 shots? Yeah, I've got a few big prices. You've got the, you've got the winners in there. <laughs> okay. I've got the ones you're hoping. They're Hail Marys. But there you go. Those are my two latest selections for the 2021 Cheltenham Festival. Now, last week we got a bit of feedback from Twitter and the price on Sire de Berlay went fairly quickly. So we have spoken to Bet365 and they're going to do their very best to hold up the prices on this week's selections for as long as possible. We can't say fairer than that, Gavin. No, no, they're they very listened, good. Yeah. They listen to what we have to say and they're going to try and hold the prices for as long as they can. So hopefully, I'm, I'm sure people are going to be wanting to get stuck into your Tower Bridge. Even, even for a day, it'd be great. Yeah, Tower Bridge, 14 to 1. They're going to hold it for as long as possible. Okay, so just in case you missed the first two episodes in the new series of Up in the Ante, shame on you if you did, but we're going to do a little catch up on our anti post portfolios. So we've got three selections each. Gavin has Sire de Berlay for the Stairs Hurdle. You've got Galvin for the National Hunt Chase. And you Saint have Wa. also got Saint Wa for the Champion Hurdle. How are you feeling? Yeah, grand. Saint Wa got beat, but obviously there was... Uh, things just didn't happen on the day. From I still think he's got a great chance, even though he has to beat a very good horse in Epitant. Um, Sire de Berlay, we instigated a gamble there. Did we? Um, Seven now, a, I think. Is he? Yeah, he's got a great chance. And uh, Galvin, I think, is a great chance because you know he's going for the National Hunt Chase. So. Yeah, you have three rock-solid ones there. That's a, it's okay. Yeah. And you? Uh, I'd rather not talk about mine, if that's all right. <laughs> I know. Well, we started off... But you in, always go for the big price We ones. started off in week one with <coughs> Mr. Fisher. Uh, yeah, that didn't go too well. Uh, week two... Sire we, de Berlay. We went... Well, yeah, Sire de Berlay obviously has ran. We went with Lord Royal in the RSA. Now, I have to say, right, people were tweeting me and they were saying, you know, oh, what a disastrous start. Do you know, Lord Royal... I, I actually was happier after the race than before because I thought he jumped brilliantly till the second last. And they're actually changing the second last fence at Turles because it's caused so much problems. So this week at Turles, the second last won't be where the second last was. Oh, really? So there you go. So Lorcan Wires had a rethink. So he's not the first horse to fall victim to the second last. And he won't be the last horse to fall victim to the second last. That's a lot of lasts. Okay. Yeah, so Lord Ryle. But look, if you're picking 33 to one shots, you'll need to get one of them. So. <laughs> yeah, and I probably haven't got one to yet. To hit the net. Yeah, so Mr. Fisher, unfortunately, uh, Nicky. And Nicky, we trust to get him back to his, yeah. uh, to his true self. Nicky and Nico. Yeah, there you go. So that is our anti-post portfolios so far. Do not forget, it is Safer Gambling Week. And me and Gavin here on Up in the Ante, we are big fans of Safer Gambling. Gavin, you have recommendations for our punters. Uh, just uh, as I said last week, uh, try and keep a spreadsheet or a, a diary or both. As I do, uh, try and... Keep your bets fairly small if you can. Make it as a bit of fun. And uh, hopefully I'll do better than last weekend. Absolutely. Enjoy it. Safe for gambling week. 
only bet what you can afford to lose. That's it folks, that is episode three in the new series of Up In The Ante in association with Bet365. Gavin, there's a bit of positivity in the air. Yeah. Things are starting to open up again. Definitely, and uh, next week it's great to see that some of the spectators can go to some of the race course in Britain. The betting shops are opening there. <clears throat> I think that the betting shops are open next week in Ireland as well, so that's good. But more importantly, Dave, we need to start doing a bit of training of this cycle. May the 22nd. Charity cycle, May the 22nd. I'm gonna do it, how many kilometers? For the whole lot's 155, but if you want to do 80, you can come to Fairy House. No, Gavin, I'm doing the whole lot. Will you You're stop that, telling okay. me? I don't want, I'm not a child, okay? I'm going to do the whole lot. Okay. Stop You're telling gonna me I can do, <laughs> you can do late and you can do the little beach. I'm going to do the whole lot, right? <laughs> so you're doing it? I'm doing it, yeah. Michael, the cameraman, are you doing it? See? It's a date. There you go. May the 22nd, the charity show, yep. cycle. We're in. And that's it for Up in the Ante. Don't forget to join us next Tuesday and every Tuesday from now until the 2021 Cheltenham Festival. 